Our first guest today is Kelsey Parker, wife of the wanted singer, the late Tom Parker. But before we speak to Kelsey, here's a reminder of Tom's story. Well, Kelsey's been on the show with us a number of times as we followed their journey, and it is an absolute privilege to have her here again with us today. Uh, she wants to celebrate and pay tribute to Tom's incredible life. Um, Kelsey, it really is lovely to have you here with Thanks us in, me. in the flesh. I mean, I, I think actually it was Nadia, you, me and Katie were on the panel when we spoke to you and Tom um, by Zoom the last yeah. time. And, you know, you inspired us at that time and we just want to say we're really sorry. Um, and, you know, everyone is looking at you from the outside. How are you feeling from the inside? Just strong. I feel strong. I'm just getting through each day. Like, I have the kids. I have to wake up each day. I have to get on with it. Like, just trying to be as strong as possible, really, in a really difficult mm. situation and time for us all. Where do you get your strength from? I don't know. I just think from within, something just... You know, I have to wake up each day and I think, right, come on, you can do it. What would he want me to do? He wouldn't want me to sit around crying, would he? He'd want me to get on with it and... I think it's being a mum as well. You've got other people to... A hundred percent. And the kids, obviously, they're not sad. They get up and they are happy and they want to know what's happening. What are we doing today? Are we going to the park? So... Are they confused about what's going on? I've been really, really honest. I've, I've taken advice and... and well, Bodie's only 19 months. Obviously, he has no clue, but even the journey with Aurelia was really, really hard because when Tom went into the hospice, she was really confused. She didn't know... You know, each day I was going to visit Tom in the hospice, like, is Daddy coming home? Is Mummy coming home? And I did say to her, he wouldn't be coming home from the hospice. And um, on uh, the Wednesday, when he did actually die, in the morning, I was leaving to go to the hospice, and I just said to her, look, I've got to go today because I've just got to make sure that the angels come and take Daddy. He'll be going, and the angels are going to collect him, and, but I need to make sure that Daddy goes to the angels, which is obviously a really, really hard conversation. And then the next day, I woke up and I had to tell her that... You know, her dad's dead. This is the advice I got. You need to be honest. I mm. told her, dad's dead. He's not coming back. Mm. So she's still just trying to, like, digest That's... that. Each each day, she's like, Mum, is dad at an appointment? I'm like, no, daddy's... I suppose with him going on tour, she thinks, well, daddy's always gone away. Daddy's always gone away. Daddy's yeah. gone on tour. Daddy's done signings, like, album signings. Like, he's gone away a lot. So mm. for her, it's the, like, you know, when she gets with my mum, she'll be like to my mum, so... Is Daddy actually not coming back? Oh, that's supposed to be so hard. It's so hard because it's like again. the repeating the conversation. Yeah, but even like to today, it. I've said to her, she's very worried where I am. So yeah. if she goes, like, say she goes to the toilet and someone else has taken her, she'll sit in the toilet and she'll say, but where's my mum? Where's my mum? Is my mum coming back? Mm. So today I've said, I've come, I'm, coming, I'm going on TV today and I'm going to go and talk about Daddy because we all need to talk about Daddy and we need to remember Daddy. Will well, she let's watch in. Yeah, she'll be watching. Let's talk yeah. about Daddy. <laughs> let's talk about Daddy. Yeah. yeah. A wonderful guy. I mean, you seem to have the most incredible relationship. Yeah, um, unbelievable. And the fact that, you know, I met Tom at 19 in a really, like, tough industry and we've gone through all these years together and we were soulmates. Like, we actually loved each other so much. He was my best friend. Positive Parkers. Positive Parkers. Yeah. Do you know what I love the most about how you speak about what you've had to go through is how you talk about the privilege of being with Tom and what an amazing time you had together and how lucky you feel that you even had that time. And it's such a positive, incredible way to live. People go through life and they never meet the one and they don't meet the love of their life. Like, I found the love of my life at the age of 19 and I've spent all these years with him. Like, how lucky am I that I can actually say that I was in love? Like, I was so in love with him. But what a great mindset to have. Like, just because society, this is how some sections of society deal with grief or bereavement, you are celebrating what you had. And I think that's a really strong mindset and a great thing to teach your children as well. Yeah, and it's, I think it's all about the kids and learning and and just celebrating him, and I want to be able to talk about their dad. Mm. Mm. When you, you, were, you were lucky enough to be with him when he died in the hospice, and actually reading about it, it sounded very beautiful, actually. It was, time. and, even, like, with Tom, it was, like, even the final moments were magical. That's the sort of person he was. Mm. Um, but I found it... I'm, it was really, really tough. Yeah. Like, one of the days, I just laid in bed in the morning and it just felt like someone had, like, dropped, like, weights on me. And I was thinking, how can I actually get out of bed this morning and actually get to that hospice? And I think on the day that he actually passed, I, I knew that they'd sedated him and I knew he was going to die that day. And that 
I had to find something within to go, you can go to that hospice and you can do this and you can be there for him. I've been there for him for all this time. I had to be there at the end and that's how it was meant to be. But that must be so difficult. Like, who... Do you have a good support system around you? Is there people...? Oh, I have, like, an army. So, <laughs> like, even from when he was diagnosed, it was... We had this army behind us supporting us and I think that's how we got through this. And you mm. still feel now that he, his presence, he shows you signs and things? Yeah, well, we did speak about it in, when he was in the hospice. Um, one of the nights I got in bed with him and we, like, spoke for hours and I just said, please give me signs every day. Like, yeah. I want to know that you're there and he's given me so many signs. Oh, like, tell, like, us what? What? tell us what. Oh, I've had, like, car alarms go off at, like, <laughs> four in the morning. I'm like, not four in the morning, Tom. Like, <laughs> like, like, do you actually talk get... to him? Yeah, I do talk oh, to him. Yeah, yeah that's how And I think it's, that's you. like a release as well to then yeah. talk to him and I can feel him there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. How candidly did you talk before Tom passed? Well, well, the thing is with Tom, we never got to... Like, people said to me, oh, did you have a funeral arranged? Like, we never went there. Like, I know he had terminal cancer, but this actually came as a massive shock to us. Like, I didn't feel like this was going to be the end for him. Um, but, yeah, we didn't, we didn't really talk about, like, death. But I think that's just the thing that was so striking about both of us, so many things, but for me... That was so striking about you. You decided that you were going to live each day with positive. Yeah. I mean, lots of people can talk about positivity, yeah. but I think you really we manifested did it. We that. Did it was it. authentic. Yeah. And, yeah. But we had to. Tom's mindset was so important. Yeah. And that's what we needed to do. And I knew that he needed that. So every day we'd wake up and we would be positive, and it was the positive Parkers. <laughs> like... So I have wondered about that because that's really each day you believed he was going to live. Yes. Was it almost? A total shock that he died. Do you right. feel like you might even still be a bit shocked? By I think it? I definitely probably am in shock still yeah. because it, you know he went on a tour and came back and then he just yeah. literally went went on that tour. But it was that was Tom as well. Like Tom's so unpredictable, and it was that he like <laughs> came back and it was like, oh no, like I've done the tour, I've ticked this box, I've ticked that, I'm ready now. How like, important it was, almost was it like... for him to get back on stage again? He he really really wanted to get back on stage and. I know that we needed to do everything to get him back on that stage, and that's what we did. We worked really hard to get him on that stage. And he was so close to his bandmates as well, wasn't oh, he? Oh, like, they were, everyone was at the hospice. Like, everyone was there with him. Really? Yeah. yeah. And it was nice for them to everyone, everyone to be there. We literally celebrated his life even at the end. Yeah. And, of course, his children, your children, will have all these incredible films, interviews, mm. the band to... To, to, to give them mm. those memories, yeah. which must feel so... You know, they're fortunate in, like... Obviously, their dad's died. It's super sad for them. But they have got something that other children will... Like, they don't have that. They have got endless footage. They could sit there and watch, you know, the Wanted Wednesday videos back-to-back yeah. back if they want to. They've got stuff that me and Tom have done together, like reality TV shows. They... Amazing memories. I was just thinking, yeah. Kelsey, you're so young to have suffered such a, a loss. And I know it's wonderful to hear you say you gained so much because you had such a wonderful relationship that some people never have, but this will shape your life going forward, won't it? Oh, massively. Look, did I think that I was going to be a widow at 32 with two children? No, this is not the way I plan my life. Like, there's just... It's, it's shocking. But I have to now live my life. And that's mm. what Tom would want. He want. He'd want me to live my life. Yeah, and, and you will navigate your way through it. Yeah. Right? And I just think that is it. You just take each day, like we did when he was diagnosed. We took each day. As it, that's all I can do you now. You are incredible, Kels. Yeah. You really are. Yeah, every yeah. top bird you tell, are. Tell, <laughs> us, tell us about this amazing book, because I just think it's incredible, the book that you're doing for, for your children and for other families like you. I think it's going to be such an important book. Yeah, so it's a book, obviously, about Tom, his life, the hope that we had. It's called Hope, because that's what we lived our life for the last 18 months, with the hope that everything was going to be OK. And the... the the, how you get through each day. You've just mm. got to remain positive. And that's what, obviously, he's trying to say to people in this book. And, yeah. And you, and you, wanna, you want to set up a charity, but, understandably, you're... Yeah, really I'm, I'm not there yet. In not there yet. In so you don't know, you don't know how that's going to play out. But um, tell us what you're, what, the way that you're thinking about that. F for me, I just want to help as many people as I can. I've learnt so much on this journey, yeah. like, so much, that the fact that before Tom got diagnosed, he'd say to me, like, Kels, you just don't research anything. Like, you're just not interested in anything. <laughs> I said, yeah, but nothing really interests me, Tom. Like, I don't feel like I need to, because he would sit and, like, research everything for hours. And then as soon as he was diagnosed, I then... You know, when they're telling you, OK, you've got 
you've it's got not. terminal cancer, we can only give you radio and chemo. I'm like, OK, but what else? Mm, There's yeah. got to be something else that I can do to help him. Mm. So I just went down like a rabbit hole and I just found all this information out and there's so much out there that can support in everything else you do. Mm. So do the radio and chemo, but support your body in other ways. And that's what I want to try and help people mm -hmm. as best as I can to, you know, raise awareness that there is other stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's great. And it's a stressful time to do research. So if you've got all that knowledge, it's great to share it. Yeah, and yeah. I know so much that my friends are like, they're like, how do you even know this information? <laughs> like, yeah. Just research. It'd be nice <laughs> to just offload it, because your brain must be, yeah. like, just completely stacked well, up. Well, Tom would get overwhelmed by the stuff that I would tell yeah. him. He'd be like, OK, right, so what are we doing? What's the plan? <laughs> yeah. oh. I don't have one. He'd be so yeah. proud if he oh. sat here today. He yeah. really would. Yeah. 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 And, and listen, thank you for for trusting us enough to come here today. We really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. Oh, Thank I you. Love you. <laughs> if you've been affected by anything Kelsey has spoken about today, please head to our website for support. We'll be back after this. <laughs>